Okay, go ahead. When you're ready. Welcome to Hamilton Park United Church of Christ on this weekend of November 22nd, 2020. This is the weekend that many across the globe are celebrating the reign of Christ, a day that is both a beginning and an end of our liturgical calendar year. And though most of us don't have a firsthand experience of a human monarchy, the vestiges of monarchy seep into our day-to-day -day lives. When we are children, many of our books, movies, and television shows depict kings and queens, princes and princesses. When we're children, we dress up as princes and princesses, kings and queens, imagining all of the privileges of being one. And as adults, we are aware of various monarchies in the world oftentimes vicariously paying special attention to their weddings and even their scandals. But the fictional and modernized monarchies of this world don't give us an appropriate model as we seek to celebrate the reign of Christ this weekend, any more than the elected leaders of these United States do. As we hold up the reign of Christ, we hold up the ideal of someone who protects and speaks up for the poor and the disenfranchised when others would exploit their powerlessness. So it is, we celebrate Christ in a way that we hold him up as the one that we live under, regardless of where it is we find ourselves. Even though we may live in this world, we hold him up in a way that we show that we don't live for the world. And it's in claiming and celebrating the reign of Christ that we hold up the ideal of just rule as a standard to which we can all aspire. And like the early Christians who proclaimed that Jesus, not Caesar, is Lord, we too can proudly state Jesus is our public servant and seek to follow his example of leadership rather than the flawed human examples that surround us. So it is that this weekend that we celebrate the reign of Christ, that we are also holding up our gifts and our commitments in dedication to what it is that we believe Jesus is calling us towards in the next year. And so as we enter into worship this day, let us turn to the words found in our call to worship and read responsively as one. From the small to the great, and from the great to the small, sing to God, for God has done marvelous things. Let the electrons circle their nuclei. Let the earth spin on its axis. Let the moons orbit the planets. Let the planets orbit the sun. Let the sun spiral in its galaxy. Let the galaxies revolve around their creator together for joy. From the small to the great, and from the great to the small, sing to God, for God has done marvelous things. Let us rejoice and give thanks, and though we may not be able to lift our voices in the same way as we once were able to, let us lift our hearts in melody. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing, your sovereign God adore. For Christ has robbed death's sting and triumphs evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up. 
pure voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Our Savior Jesus reigns, the God of truth and love. The Lamb who purged our stains is crowned with power above. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Indeed. Let us take time to discern the things that are closing us off from being able to rejoice in the reign of Christ, so that we may name these things before God and one another. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Sovereign of all the nations, we confess that we have not seen your face among our neighbors in need. We have not shared our food with the hungry. We have not offered clothes or shelter to the needy. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have neglected to care for all that God has created. Lord, forgive us. Open our hearts, minds, and spirits that we may draw closer to you. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, when we acknowledge our human limitations and our short-sightedness, we are forgiven and we are freed by the mercy of Christ. So draw closer to all that Jesus ushers in to the world. Amen. And now, let us draw closer to what Christ is bringing to us through the Word this day. We are exploring Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. And it's a reading that closely connects to the parables that we've been reading over the past couple of weeks. And though it's not a parable we will read a narrative depiction that emphasizes the importance of heeding the call placed upon us as we seek to live under the reign of Christ rather than under the influences of the ways of the world around us. And though it's not a parable, we... Though it's not a parable, we are reading this depiction in a way that helps us to move in to what it is that Jesus is teaching us. Our yearly stewardship program is one that we can follow to help us with this call. And as we move towards a time which we will be holding up our commitments for the year ahead, it is good for us also to explore more fully the kind of living that Christ is calling us towards. And here is the reading. Now, when the human one comes in his majesty and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his majestic throne. All the nations will be gathered in front of him. He will separate them from one another, just as a sh shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side, but the goats he will put on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, come you who will receive good things from my father. Inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. For I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? 
When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you, or naked and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And then the king will reply to them, I assure you that when you have done it for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. And then he will say to those on his left, get away from me, you who will receive terrible things. Go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't welcome me. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. And then they will reply, Lord, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't do anything to help you? And then he will answer, I assure you that when you haven't done it for one of the least of these, you haven't done it for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous ones will go into eternal life. Here ends the reading. Now before we unfold the scripture reading, let us pray. Lord, this is a tough one, and we ask you to be with us in ways that help us to open our eyes. Help us to open our hearts to the ways that you are calling us towards. Help us to find ways to live under and within the reign of Christ and away from the powers of this world. And help us to use the unpacking and unfolding of your holy word to help us to have a check-in with how we're doing in your reign. Amen. So our title for today is Time for a Checkup. And no matter what stage of life that we find ourselves in, we are encouraged to schedule an annual physical exam with our doctors. Am I right? And perhaps you, like me, find yourself tempted at times to allow these appointments to get moved farther and farther down on your list of priorities. After all, I don't believe that any one of us like to be poked and prodded, scoped and monitored, questioned and observed in all of the ways that a doctor needs to during these physical exams. But however much we may want to avoid them, we eventually get to them because we realize that what the doctor finds could save our life. For this is one way that the doctor is able to catch things before they fester and become worse, perhaps cancerous, within our bodies. After spending the past two weeks unpacking parables about how we are to live, our reading today offers us a different kind of checkup, one that helps us to assess how we are doing with all that Jesus is calling us towards how we are living under the reign of Christ. And though this is a somewhat familiar reading, and it's often interpreted eschatologically, that is, it's often interpreted as about the end times and about those who will get into heaven and those who will not get into heaven, there are other ways for us to look at this reading. And today we're going to explore one of those ways that was inspired by a homiletical perspective written by the Reverend Amy, the Reverend Lindsay P. Armstrong in the book Feasting on the Word. In it, she emphasizes that this scripture, this scripture was written in a way not to scare or condemn, but to provide a snapshot of our overall health, development, learning, and growth, kind of in the same way that we are offered a snapshot of our health during our physical exams. It's a way for us to look at our spiritual health in ways that will hopefully prayerfully lead us to new habits and new ways of life. 
and like our doctors who want to help us to live long and healthy lives, so too does our Creator want us to live long and healthy lives, lives that reveal that we are living under the reign of Christ. In order to have healthy spiritual lives, it's important for us to set aside time for a spiritual wellness check, just like we do take time for our annual physical checkups with our doctors. It's in doing so that we might notice things that are infecting our relationship with what it is that God has for us, things that need to have attention paid towards them, things that might need to be taken care of, things that may be festering deep within, some things that might need to be removed or cut out completely, so that our overall health and our spiritual health can grow stronger and stronger. So if we find ourselves during these check-ins and check-ups, that we find that we are growing closer to selfish living and distancing ourselves from a faith community, apathy can grow deep inside us like a tumor. And if we find that we are living much more for the worldly goals around us rather than for the goals of Christ and the ways of Christ, we find that we can be swallowed up by cancerous, egocentrical ways. And if we find that we are succumbing to temptation and greed rather than sharing what it is that we have with others, we can find ourselves drowning in worldly materialism. Reverend Armstrong writes that this reading gives us the image of the Son of Man who separates the sheep from the goats as a kind of diagnostic tool designed to root out self-centered living and help us to recognize the things that we need to separate, the things that we can see are whether we are living under the reign of Christ, separating them away from the things that are causing us to succumb to the reign of the world around us. Jesus teaches what teaches us that what and whom we choose to follow, it makes a difference. And it makes a difference not only for us individually, but it makes a difference for all that those ripples that are affected by our living, all of the ways that those can ripple out and reach others. And just like our physical health is greatly affected by the poor choices we make, there are consequences consequences to the actions and inactions that we choose to take in our spiritual life as well. Our life has far more meaning and value than we could ever imagine. For God's love is like an overflowing fountain that continually bubbles over into the world. And like a reflecting pool that captures the gentle raindrops as they fall. As we allow God's love to fill us, that love is reflected from our living as we too then overflow with all that we've been given. We freely give of ourselves as an expression of the love that is poured out and poured into and over us. For it is a love that cannot be contained. It's a love that continues to be overflowing into the places and into the people that we find ourselves with. Oftentimes, this overflowing and outpouring reaches farther and farther and wider and wider than we could ever imagine or we could ever realize. The righteous in our reading were surprised to hear that they had been offering care in all of the ways that our gospel reading described it. Their actions were unconscious, without calculation or expectation. Evidently, the love of God simply easily overflowed freely from their lives. On the other hand, the unrighteous were distressed and shocked when they heard that they had missed opportunities to show their respect for their king, inferring that 
if only they had known that he was there, that they would have done the right thing. And just that reaction alone reveals that their worldly instincts and calculated efforts blocked off their ability and the possibility of a natural overflowing and outpouring of God's love further into the world. Evidently, the love of God hadn't been allowed into their lives, perhaps even at all. Now, when we see ourselves in the reflections that we offer to the world, rather than seeing and experiencing God's image, then we have work to do to be able to get the divine waters that have been poured into us and upon us, to be able to bubble over again, again, and again out from our lives. And we might not like the warning signs. And we might not like the warnings that we receive from readings such as this one any more than we like to go to our annual physical exams. After all, it's these things that ask us to recalibrate our lives, setting our center goal on the reign of Christ. But they point us in the right direction, helping us to recognize places and ways that we are wise to tend, particularly since heart troubles plague most all of us. Now, as the meditative music pours out over us, let us take a moment to open ourselves, to open ourselves to our annual spiritual checkup. Meditative music. Our shepherding God satisfies our every need. In faith, let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, we pray for the church. As you have made Christ the head of all, 
Help us to live faithfully as his body. O oh Lord, our God, we pray for the earth, that it may be made healthy and whole. O oh Lord, our God, we pray for all nations, that this virus is ended and your peace reigns across the earth. O oh Lord, our God, we pray for this community. Help us to see Christ among all those that Christ calls us to see and share with. O oh Lord, our God, we pray for our loved ones and friends. Remember the people of your pasture, rescue the lost, bind up the broken, heal the sick, and feed those who hunger. Loving shepherd, lead and guide us in green pastures and by still waters, in right paths and through dark valleys, and Gather us as one with you through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Friends, over the last month or so, we've been asked to prayerfully ask God for what it is that his hope is for us, for our 2021 giving. We've been asked to ask God to make us all a part of this church's great outpouring of generosity and love. Together, we were asked to pray the same prayer over and over. And so now let us pray that prayer together as one. Great one, for you the floods clap, for you the hills sing. You know my situation better than anyone. Take my credits and debits, ins and outs, my pluses and minuses, surpluses and lacks, and show me how to use them and to join the great chorus of creation. Amen. On this day, we hold up the reign of Christ as we also hold up our commitments to be a part of the unfolding presence of God in the year ahead.
We give you but your own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is yours alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. And let us pray. God of marvelous things, let the clink of the coins in these plates be as the clapping of the floods for you, O God. Let the clicks of online pledges resound as the waves of the sea and everything in it. Let the quiet rustle of bills and checks and pledge cards be as soft as the wind drifting over the mountains who are singing together for joy. Let the fervent prayers and the lofty hopes, the quiet determination of these people and these gifts be our song, our hymn of praise to you, you who are doing such marvelous things. And may the power of your Holy Spirit turn this unfinished work, this earnest but not quite sufficient melody, into a great symphony of praise until you come again. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The floods clap the shores. The winds sing over the hills. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? God is love and grace. And God pours love and grace into the world in marvelous ways. And with God's help, we are about to do the same. So go now. Go now as good people to roar, to clap, and to sing, and to give everything you've got together for joy. In the name of the Creator, the Sustainer, and the Redeemer, amen. Amen. 